Hello and welcome to the Virtual Airline Pilot channel. Today we're looking at how to start up the 737 NGX from cold and dark. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello and welcome to this video on how to start this aircraft up from cold and dark. This is the PMDG 737NGX currently parked at stand 28 at London Gatwick Airport on a beautiful grey and rainy day with a hint of sunshine which is very usual for this time of year. Anyway so yeah the purpose of this video is to show you how to start this aircraft up and I'm, I'm doing this video because I'm going to be doing lots of full flight videos on this channel and I didn't want to include the full startup procedure every single time because you get bored of it. So you can use this video as a reference guide to go back to. Um, it will take you through the various procedures and processes to get the aircraft fired up and then full flight videos will start from the pre-flight flow. Okay, So um, the procedures that I'm using today are taken from a software program that I use with this aircraft which is FS to crew and effectively what that is is a first officer simulation for this aircraft and just like in the real world you can give jobs and tasks to the first officer to complete such as putting the gear down, lowering flaps, turning lights on and with an aircraft as complex as the NGX you kind of need it in my opinion. So um, the program uh, mimics procedures from a number of carriers um, there's three sets of SOPs or standard operating procedures. I'm using set three, which is that of a low cost carrier. I'm using that because, in my opinion, it's the most immersive, it's the most labor intensive for, for me, the captain, and um, I, I think it's the best way to fly this aircraft to really get stuck in. So those are the procedures I'm using. You can find out more about how to start this aircraft up as well from the flight crew training manual which is included with this aircraft. Okay, so without further ado, let's go onto the flight deck and start getting this aircraft started up. Okay, so welcome on board. Another thing to note then is that I'm using a software program called uh, EasyDoc to look around the flight deck. It allows me to do exactly that with ease using the mouse and also set preset views such as this view, this view, this view. It really does help with an aircraft as complex as the NGX to navigate around the cockpit and certain stages of the flight you do need to be looking at multiple things so it's well worth checking out because it does make things like starting the aircraft up a lot lot easier. Okay so the first thing we need to do then is the power up and safety inspection. This is done by the captain and uh, first off we need to establish DC power for the aircraft uh, so let's just move forward a little bit and look at this panel here. This is the uh, battery switch. Just make sure this switch here is set to BAT and then select that to ON. So you see some lights lit up there. That means DC power, 28 volts of DC power is now coming into the aircraft, which means we can look at doing some checks and then establishing AC power. So first off, check that the electric hydraulic pumps are off, which they are. Landing gear lever is down and uh, we can now establish AC power, but first we need to do a fire test. Reason being is that um, I'm going to be getting uh, AC power from the APU today, which like engines one and two is a small engine at the back of the aircraft, doesn't provide propulsion, but it does provide power. As such, that engine receives and gives electricity and also there's fuel involved, so it is a fire risk. and we check the fire panel is working so if when the APU is started up there is a fire it can be detected and shut down accordingly. Test is performed by two switches, this switch here and this switch here. First off we move this switch to the left, check those lights illuminate and to the right as well. That's fine and the same here we check the squibs, check these lights illuminate so these are the fire bottles that if there was a fire these are what extinguish the fire when the fire handle was pulled and twisted. That's all fine. We can now look at bringing AC power into the aircraft via the APU. That is done on the overhead. Uh, this switch here, which
which is the um, APU start switch. So we move that to on and then to start. Oops. Okay, now the low oil pressure light should illuminate shortly. That's it. And then the EGT or engine temperature will start to rise. So we'll just monitor that. Also, I uh, forgot to mention that light there, the position light should be to steady as well. So you can see the EGT rising, oil pressure has increased, and then this needle should start to drop as the APU stabilises. You can see it dropping there. Okay, so that light there has come on um, telling me that power is now available from the APU. In the manual for the aircraft, Boeing do recommend that you use this fuel pump here to prolong the life of the APU. You can do that if you so wish by doing that. Okay, so um, once we're happy, we can click that switch there and that switch there to bring AC power into the aircraft. And on the overhead panel here, we see AC power 115 volts, CPS frequency 402. So those are within limits, so that's fine. Let's close that. And then we do another fire test, same as before. Excellent. So now we've done that, we can arm the emergency lights, close that guard, and continue on with our safety inspection. So we would hit the attend button. So that calls the cabin in the back. If we were simulating crew, we would get a, um, a call back to notify us that that's working. Next thing to do is a config warning. We do that by moving down here and you simply move the throttles forward and backwards and you should hear a horn. There we go, so that config warning is working and now we test the cargo fire as well which is done by this switch here so we press that check those will illuminate good stuff okay so that is the power up and safety inspection flow complete so the next thing to do is the uh, preliminary startup and that starts on the aft overhead panel so if i just move back a bit you know, in the real world you would be sat in this seat and um, completing it from there. If I actually move to that position, you, you'll see it's not the easiest of angles to work at. Um, you, know, you, you could tilt your head back and, and do it to read it properly, but as we're in Flight Simulator, it's far easier just to do that. So we start up here from the right-hand side and move to the left. Okay, so we start off with the flight recorder open that guard there, switch that to test, make sure that goes off, that's fine. And then the Mac airspeed warning test. Okay, they're working. Now there is a reason why number two isn't working and I have forgotten why. So perhaps someone can leave me a comment, but um, I'll have to refer back to the manual on that one. I think it is a certain point in time it will it will work. So for now we'll say that's fine. Moving across then, we check that there's no lights in the EEC panel, which there's not. We check the uh, crew oxygen, which should be between uh, 1100 and 1900 PSI. Showing just over 1600 PSI, which is fine. Turn the interphone on, which allows us to communicate with the ground crew. And uh, now we would go to the IRS, the inertial reference system, and start setting that up. So starting on the right hand side, move to nav, this light on DC should extinguish and a line should appear. Excellent. And then do the same for the left. On DC, extinguish and then a line. Excellent. So that's the preliminary startup complete. The next thing to do, we'll go back into the captain's seat, is uh, to do the station setup. But just before I do that, I'm going to grab the ATIS 
and also start setting up some bits and pieces on the FMC. So I'm using um, Active Sky Next and that allows me to get ATIS on this frequency here. If you don't use Active Sky Next, you'd simply tune to the ATIS frequency for the airport you're at and you get textual information as well as voice. So let's just switch that across. Echo, Golf, Kilo, Kilo, Airport Information, Delta, 1, 3, 5, 0, Zulu, Weather, Wind, 1, 6, 1, at 1, 1, Visibility, 3, Sky Condition, Ceiling, 800, Broken, Moderate Rain, Temperature, 9, 2 point, 8, QNH, 0, 9, 8, 6, Advise on Initial Contact, you have information, Delta, Echo, Golf, Keep, Okay, excellent. So, just noted down some key things there. The main thing being the Q&H and also the information, which is information delta. That is the um, the letter you would give if you were calling air traffic control for your departure clearance. You'd let them know that you have information delta as the latest information. If there was uh, information echo, they would tell you, and you have a listen to that, and then you'd have the latest information. But um, right, let's go to the FMC. In fact, no, let's go up here. So the Q&H was uh, 986, so I'm going to set that on here. Oops. Okay. Let's do the first officers as well. Excellent, done. Um, right, let's take a look at the flight management computer. So it's saying enter IRS position hit FMC, check that the um, air rack cycle, the nav data that's in the FMC is correct and that it is valid. The date today is the uh, let's check. date today is the 3rd so this database is um, active so we can now just clear that we can tell the aircraft where we are so we're at Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, which is Gatwick. Put that in there. And then the gate is 28. Well, that's what I uh, selected it as, but it looks like it's 27. Okay, so we'll put 27 in. There we go. And that's given us our coordinates of our location. So we go like that, and like that. There you go. You see the aircraft now knows exactly where it is. These details can be gained from um, the last position of the aircraft which is exactly that, so it knows where it is. Or if you have charts for the airport all of the stand numbers have coordinates as well. So you can do it that way but it's, it's quite a long way around so I would recommend um, just putting the stand number in seeing if it comes up. If not you will have to do it manually or do it from that last position. Anyway so that is ATIS and IRS out of the way. The next thing to do would be um, our station setup. So at this point, the first officer is probably out doing the walk around in the rain, lucky him. But uh, I'm inside in the warm and I can do my station setup. So first of all, you check your oxygen supply. That's fine. Confirm the time is correct, so 14.35 UTC, just check my own watch. Yep, that's fine. EFIS panel, so we set this. And uh, we put the um, altimeter reading in, which was 986, so that's correct. Light test, so this is performed on the first flight of the day, so you wouldn't do it when you arrived at your destination, you're turning the aircraft around, but you would simply just turn that to test and this illuminates every single light in the flight deck and allows you to see if any lights aren't working and uh, it's quite good because you can then appreciate how many different um, lights, dials, gauges, warning systems there are in this flight deck. There's quite a lot and if any of these were out you would call an engineer and uh, hopefully they can come fix it before uh, flight leaves otherwise you're not going anywhere but I'm happy with that so we'll go back here and switch that back to that setting there uh, another thing just check that the um, screens are set to the correct brightness 
I'm happy with that. At night you might want to turn them down a bit. And um, that's pretty much it in terms of what we do. The next thing to do would be the CDU preflight, and that is done by clicking root. And you'll see it's already put EGKK in there, which you can put in your origin, and then put your destination and start loading in your route. But as I said at the beginning of this video, this was really just to show you how you get to this stage in the aircraft. Okay. The next point would be putting your route in and going through um, the pre-flight flow. After the pre-flight flow, you then start doing checklists and and so on. So those will be in the full flight videos. So I hope that helped. Um, it was quite a quick process. It, it does take a bit of getting used to, and um, practice makes perfect, really. So. Um, yeah, try it out. That's how you start a 737 from cold and dark using SOP set 3 for FS to crew. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon for another video on the Virtual Airline Pilot channel. See ya!